So I'll give a brief introduction um, to Catherine and Steve. So as well as an author, Catherine is a head teacher, education consultant, and delivers regular CPD training to teachers, focusing on improving children's attitudes to learning. Steve is also an experienced classroom teacher and head of faculty who has spent time testing tools for character development and investigating the impact of mental toughness on young people. He's currently the director of Vespa Mindset, which aims to support and empower learners to take control of their future. If you're not familiar with mental toughness, it's a brand new handbook from our series of wellbeing and character education books, which include thinking classrooms and growth mindset lessons. It contains practical classroom activities for each year group from reception through to year six to help to develop resilient mindsets and a positive approach to learning. It also comes with downloadable resources and video lessons to support teaching. I'll now pass you over to um, Catherine to talk you through some of the research behind mental toughness. Thank you very much, Gaynor. So Steve would be doing this section, but unfortunately he's got technical difficulties in Dubai, so I'm afraid you are stuck with me. Um, so moving on, uh, Steve and I, um, and we're going to start off thinking about what does mental toughness mean to you? Um, and I think often when we think about mental toughness, you know, we think of something along the lines of this, don't we? That ultimate huff, look, Rocky, uh, someone who can cope and deal with anything. But actually, mental toughness isn't that. It isn't about always being able to cope. It's about developing tools to be able to deal with things in a more effective way to overcome the challenges in life. And I think that's really, really important for our children nowadays. Um, I'm sure you've noticed in your classrooms and your schools, a significant difference in how children came back to school after COVID, um, the lack of resilience that they have and how things can really challenge them at times. Um, and one of the things we wanted to do was to link effective research into classroom practice. Um, and so we looked at the model of uh, the four C's. Um, and according to Peter Clough and Strachinsky, it's a personality trait which determines in some part how individuals perform when exposed to stresses, pressure and challenge, irrespectively of the prevailing situation. So it's how we deal with these things and how we approach them. And there are times in our job as educators that actually it can be really, really, really challenging, can't it? And our mental toughness is needed at those times. But that doesn't mean we're always mentally tough. It's OK to find things challenging and it needs to be the same for our children. Um, so where did it come from? So it's, the root of um, mental toughness is from health psychology and the idea of resilience with commitment control as a passive concept and hardiness from Kabasa, commitment control and challenge. And Peter Clough um, and AQR International have done um, a considerable amount of research on this. And they developed a psychometric measure called the MTQ4A. Now, when we started doing this work and Steve and I started working together, um, it was really, really fascinating to actually look at my own mental toughness. And I used the questionnaire to do that. Um, we also looked at the research and there's over 100 research and um, peer reviewed papers on this that look at the positive impact um, devices like this have both on adults and on children and developing these skills is really, really fundamental for our children and very powerful. You know, we know that life doesn't go to plan and we want to equip our children with those skills to be able to support them and to be able to give them strategies and a toolkit to be able to deal with that. Is mental toughness important? What can it deliver? So the studies and the research show a really strong link between mental toughness and performance. It can account for about 25% of variation and the adoption of positive behaviours. It improves well-being and it also improves aspirations in our youngsters, which is really, really key for us. And these translate into really positive factors in terms of employability, openness to change, transition, retention, social mobility, motivation, stress management and mental health. Um, and this is really, really important, I think, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, especially the way that children are 
presenting in schools now um, and to be able to give them those skills is vital. So one of the things we can look at is if we think about our behaviour in terms of mental toughness as a spectrum. So we can be mentally sensitive at times and that's OK. And we need to normalise that being OK. But what we want to develop is a wider range of, of skills in being able to demonstrate behaviours that are mentally tough that we can use to approach things differently. So if we think of some examples, mentally sensitive, we might not like change uh, and change is often a, a big upheaval for all of us. However, um, a mentally tough person would uh, behaving in that way might see it as a challenge. Uh, mentally sensitive might not like being measured, not see tests as a good thing, whereas a mentally tough person might see it as enjoyable. They want to improve, they want to refine themselves, they want to get better. Mentally sensitive children and adults can be easily distracted uh, because they're often avoiding things that they may perceive to be difficult, where a mentally tough behaviour would be to have high levels of focus and to know that that will impact on us um, effectively. Uh, and don't ask questions. If you're mentally sensitive, you'd be reluctant to engage. However, uh, mentally tough behaviours are really curious um, and they show that curiosity. So when you look at mentally sensitive and mentally tough behaviours, we can see that a lot of the mentally tough behaviours are ones that we want to develop in our children to be really, really effective learners. Um, and that would be key for all of this. So Peter Cuff's model is uh, the four C's. Um, and we wanted to break this and transfer this down into a, an approach that was really accessible for all children in primary schools. So you can see that we've got the first C of confidence. So confidence is something that can be really hindered by for some children in from a variety of sources, but actually recognising what we're good at and recognising that's important. As teachers, I'm sure if you've taught a lesson, you can tell me everything that went wrong in that lesson. And we're not as good at identifying what we've been successful at either. And that's something that's really key. Um, challenge, wanting to challenge ourselves and trying new challenges to help ourselves grow. And again, that's fundamental. We can all stay in our comfort zones, can't we? And if we want to develop as learners and we want to approach new things, we need to be able to reach those new challenges. Commitment and stickability. Um, sticking at something, even when it's tricky and being resilient, helps us to grow. And it's a really interesting one to reflect on in our classrooms, how often we provide opportunities, activities where we can show stickability, where there is time to persevere and to overcome challenges in our learning. And then control. And control is about developing control over what, how we respond to challenges. And, you know, we can't control everything as much as we'd like to, but what can we control? What can we do? Um, and one of the sessions that we'll share with you um, in this um, webinar, we'll go into that in a bit more detail. So when we were designing this model, we wanted to create images that would be accessible to represent these different behaviours from, um, from reception all the way through to year six. The children particularly liked the idea of the remote control that controls their behaviour, and that was a real hit with the children. And the stickability, the glue, the sticking at things um, works really, really well for them. OK, so I'm going to now move on to talking a bit more about the practical side of mental toughness and how that translates into practice in terms of the books. So our book is designed to be a full of practical ideas um, for every year group. There are eight sessions uh, that cover all the different aspects of the four C's. Some will focus on a specific act. Uh, an aspect and others will focus on the combination of them as the children develop them. We wanted them to develop a toolkit that would support them to be able to approach learning, to be able to approach challenges in life and to cope and to deal with those in a more effective way. We also wanted to create classroom and school cultures where children felt safe and secure to share things that they perhaps were worried about or had concerns about. And I think that's a real key, that collaborative and collective culture of schools can be developed through the opportunities that these sessions provide. Um, so the practical implementation of the theory of the four C's 
Um, some really good practice as a starting point. So one of the things that all the lessons utilise is talk partners. And we use talk partners by children having to work in a talk partner that changes on a regular basis, that's randomly selected, that's mixed ability. And that person is the person that they talk to. Now, for children to be successful in that role as a talk partner, we need to provide a success criteria. So we create that in classrooms and that will vary depending on what your children's needs are in terms of speaking and listening. Um, but they'll get to do that through um, a success criteria of behaviours and by having the opportunity to provide feedback for each other. And I think that's really, really important. Um, we wanted to have um, the language of mental toughness as a key aspect. So there are, in the sessions, you'll see that there is language reinforced through that. And um, that translates out into all of our classroom practice. So you'll hear that language being used in different contexts and maths, in science, in discussions, and children use that language. Children like words, don't they? And they particularly like words that are complex. Um, and I think it's really good if you model using that language for them and that becomes their natural language, um, including other words such as resilience um, and all of that. And we make links within the sessions to those concepts throughout. Um, I think it's really important that as teachers, we are role models um, and we know from research that the most key thing in our schools and in our classrooms is the relationships between teachers and children. Um, and we have a massive impact that should be really celebrated on the children in our schools and relationships within these concepts of mental toughness and supporting individuals and classes. It's really, really key. And one of the things that we can do is that is normalizing some of the difficulties and the challenges that we face. You know, you know how much the children admire you. If they see you out of school, it's like meeting a celebrity, isn't it? Um, but they do value what you say and what you do. So I think it is really, really key um, that we share that with them. Um, so if you found something difficult as a child, I'm dyslexic, I found spelling really, really difficult. Um, so I use that as one of the things that I talk to children about and normalize that um, for them and then talk about how I overcame that and what we did um, to support myself at that time. And even now what I do to ensure that when I write things down, uh, be it a book or whatever, that it is accurate and it is secure in what it should say and do. I think it's really key for us to have that scaffolding through that. And one of the ways that we do that is visible thinking. So throughout the book, you'll see visible thinking, which is where we're encouraging teachers to share either anecdotes or to model things for the children or to share their own experiences with the children and to provide scaffolding about their processes, how they think about things, what they see. And again, thinking about that and putting some time and reflecting on that when you're teaching is, has a huge impact for children. And if we model and we scaffold it, that removes the barriers for other children who may find that difficult to talk about their feelings, to share things. And it also normalises it. And we need to normalise that life is difficult um, and life is challenging for our children. Um, and it's that explicitness. Um, and I think that is really um, impressive. So we want our children to develop a toolkit um, and the four C's we, is used in the book to help them with different strategies. So I'm going to move on now and share a sample lesson with you. OK, so this is one of our year six lessons, and this uses Stephen Covey's model of the circles of control um, and just to look at how it's set out, every session has a summary. It looks at what it's focusing on, what we're aiming for our outcomes and the resources that are there. All of the resources are included in the book so that you can access it and to save you time. And I think, you know, we know how busy teachers are, so it's great to have everything in one place for you. Um, everything is developmental and we design the sessions to last about 20 to 25 minutes. They do sometimes grow over. You can imagine you can have some fabulous discussions on that and things and the threads will come into other lessons and other sessions as well. Um, 
Stephen Covey's model of the uh, circles of control explores what we can control in life and what we can't control. It's a model adults use in business and everyday life, but it translates really, really well, I think, to year six and to give them a toolkit to reflect on how we can control uh, what we can control in certain situations and what we can't. Um, so we look at what might concern us. Um, and then we also look at within that the things that we have influence over. So in this session, we use um, case studies, so examples, and these relate to experiences children have um, and they are adaptable. So one of the great things to do is to bring in things that arise in your classroom and um, that may concern your children or outside of school that you're aware of challenges, difficulties, and give them situations that they're familiar with. Um, in the year six sessions, we do look at transition to secondary uh, as some of our case studies, because we know that that's a huge thing for our children as they move on from uh, our primary schools. So here we've got Suling, and this is the case study. So she's trying to do her homework, but her computer was running out of battery and her younger brother was being annoying. She didn't want to do her homework and instead wanted to go and see her friends. She was also annoyed as it was raining. And as part of this activity, we ask our children to explore what can you control in that situation? If you're suing, what can you control? And they would work with a partner and they would identify the aspects that they could control, the aspects they might be able to influence and things that are going to be a concern. Um, and obviously, prime example here, we can't control the rain. Um, so actually, should we be annoyed at something we can't control? And you can then have really fantastic discussions about different situations like this. Again, it's a model that you can refer back to and utilise in lots of different ways once the children are familiar with it. In a session such as this, there would be lots of modelling. The teacher would explore a different case study and before the children then looked at some themselves, and they would perhaps have different ones um, so that you could then have different discussions and different amounts of feedback. Um, but I think for me, one of the things is really key in these sessions is giving the children the opportunity to talk and reflect on things in a very non-judgmental environment so that they know that they're safe um, to do so, which is um, really key. So moving forward to our um, younger children. So Burst the Bubble is a session from year two, which uses bubbles as a stimulus to think about problems and how we can remove our problems. So we're looking at something similar to the year six session, but perhaps at a, a, at a more accessible level for our younger children. Again, similar structure to the session. You can see that's an, um, the initial extract from the book. Uh, and the resources are all included. So in this session, we'd be looking at bubbles and how easy it is to pop a bubble because um, they're quite fragile. And we'd reflect on that and look at the word worry. So we'd ask children to think about what does the word worry mean? And what do we, how do we feel when we're worried? What does that make us feel like? Again, having those open and honest discussions as a class with the teacher modeling some of the things that they feel about when they're worried and behaviors that they do normalizes it for our children. Um, and then we talk after that about specific things that we're worried about and build that onto strategies. What can we do to burst our worry bubbles? Um, and children get to record if they would like their worry bubbles uh, and look at that. So in this session, you can see as it develops, there's the visible thinking, how you model um, and share that practice. And then if you're moving on to here, we collect in the book some of the children's responses to share. So you've got examples to share with your children and also to look at things that come out of the discussion. Um, so how do you behave when you're worried? You might be quiet, bite your nails, too scared to talk about it, not sleeping. And then thinking about how we manage our worries and burst the bubbles, try to do something to overcome your worry. For example, try to make new friends. Um, because one of the worries we explored in this session when we were piloting them was moving house and moving schools, because that was a, something that applied to some of the children. Once you've tried something new, it gets easier. Um, talk to someone. And what would you say to someone if they're worried about learning? So then we bring it into more of a 
school-based context and what they can do if they're worried about their learning, which is something that we know children do feel. Um, so the session looks at all of those aspects and then the children also record their worries and talk about them. And for some children, recording their worries in art form makes it more accessible um, and they engage in that. And some children find it easier to talk about it. So we look at developing opportunities um, throughout the sessions so that enables different children to respond in ways that they feel comfortable um, with. I was talking to my year six teacher recently about the sessions that we've done and she was doing those. And one of the things that she was feeding back is that we found over the last few years that running these sessions and having them in our curriculum opens up our children to sharing lots of things that perhaps we didn't know about them. And it's a really positive thing, while some of them may be challenging issues that we weren't aware of, the fact we know about them means that we can do things about them and having those relationships and having that time is really, really key to talk about it. Um, and I think that's really, really valuable. Um, and we will hear from after doing this session, you'll hear that you can translate that into other lessons. So there'll be a maths lesson where we're talking about what can we do about this problem and the children will use some of the strategies from the um, curriculum lesson here and translate that over which again is a really effective use of their skills um, and we see them growing in terms of their learning skills as well as their resilience and their self-efficacy using this toolkit um, okay so thinking about what our top tips would be to supporting your children in your schools um, in terms of mental toughness. Um, so one of the things that I would really recommend is to think about feedback in school, how you give, how you receive feedback. Um, and I think it's really, really powerful to think about that. Um, one of the things that we've noticed is if we're more neutral in the way we respond to children and their feedback, their answers to questions, that reduces their anxiety. Now, children are very aware when we are over the top and it's not a valid um, reaction to something. Um, they, you know, they catch on to things like that very quickly. Equally, just the neutral, the norm, so it's not feeling as pressured, has a real positive impact on children. You still give them feedback, but you're doing it in a very calm manner um, and therefore they're listening to what you're saying rather than the emotions that you're portraying in that. Um, it doesn't mean we don't give feedback, but just doing it in a very calm manner reduces their anxiety that if they give it in, you, they give you some information and it could be perceived as being wrong by the child, that your reaction may be more negative, for example. Um, I think the key for me is listen. And, you know, give time for children to respond and for some children to engage in these sessions takes longer than others. Um, but actually, they're the ones you're really looking to unlock. And um, one of the things I think is really powerful is when the children are talking for staff in the classroom to listen at a distance. You learn a lot about your children, but you're not interfering in those conversations because children will feel much more comfortable talking to their peers about it initially than they will to members of staff. Um, and I think that's very important. As we said earlier, I think normalizing, finding things challenging and difficult is key, whatever that may be. So if you find something difficult, share it. Um, children think that teachers know an awful lot and we do, but we're all still learning all of the time. That's one of the best bits about the job. So I think it's it's a really useful practice to normalise finding things challenging and explaining that things are difficult and learning should be challenging. Use situations that occur in your classroom and um, all of the sessions can be adapted when they use real life scenarios and you can take the opportunity to pick up on things, challenges that you've had as a class, different activities that have perhaps um, caught children out or situations with friends that have been difficult or home things and using those in the classroom is really, really powerful. Um, I'm a great lover of children's books. Um, so we use those a lot and I quite often tweet about different wonderful examples, but I've got two um, here that are fabulous. So this is in key stage two, tough guys, because when we start talking about mental toughness with our children, they probably get um, 
this sort of image and we use this book in our um, sessions in year four to explore actually what does it mean to be mentally tough and we think of superheroes as mentally tough but this beautifully illustrated book shows actually superheroes have worries too and again it's really effective for normalizing things and great particularly for boys and then this is another um, beautiful book called A Little Bit Different by Claire Alexander um, and this we're using year two but it, we I've used it for whole school assemblies and this looks at why we're unique and why we're special and goes back to the element of the four series of looking at confidence what should we celebrate about ourselves and yes we are different but that's okay and again it's normalizing that um, and this beautifully written book that deals with um, a ploofer who can't shoof um, um, and his shoe eventually turns into a rainbow that shows his uniqueness um, and I think it's really really powerful um, and I'd highly recommend both of those books as ways in um, when we're talking about culture and um, both classroom and school one of the things that we do every year and every term in our school is look at a whole school assembly where we're exploring one of these books um, and we all collectively respond so children will go away and do follow-up sessions in the classroom um, where they look at for instance what makes us unique when we responded to a little bit different and um, the book look up we explored what we should if we take the time to look up what do we appreciate in life um, and again that collective exploration of these concepts in different books in different experiences is really really powerful to create to help create cultures that are supportive of children and developing those mental toughness and ultimately a healthy self-esteem I think one of the things that we like to do is use the four C's toolkit. Um, so if we think back to confidence, control, commitment and challenge and looking at things through that. So when we look at a problem like falling off your bike and you're hurting yourself, we can see that that's going to be upsetting. You're going to feel disappointed. But can we look at that differently with younger children? We put on our um, 4C glasses and look at it in a way through the model of the 4Cs. So look at actually what's been successful, what should you be proud of in that situation that you've tried, for instance, um, and what can you commit to do next to continue to try? Um, and I think that, again, is highly effective. It's things that everyday children learn to do, ride a bike, tie a shoelace, and we use those um, to develop those skills and to provide context for our children to continue um, to learn and develop them and develop these skills. So I think I'm going to hand back over now to Gaynor and we've given some time now for questions if that's okay. Thanks Catherine. So yeah, I think we've got some questions in the chat. So shall I just sort of go through those and then we'll just run through. And then once we've gone through those, um, open up that if anybody wants to just ask any questions. Um, okay, so we've just, I hope you sorted your, that's fine, you're just on audio, that's okay. So I do believe, yes, you will get the PowerPoints emailed from Hodder, okay. So Catherine, um, just to reiterate, how many sessions did you say were in the book? So there's eight sessions from reception to year six and they can be used in a range of ways. So you could take a theme across your school, perhaps you want to look at challenge to start with and you could pick out the sessions that focus on challenge and explore those as a whole school one half term and the next half term you could choose commitment and explore the sessions in each year group that look at that or you can work through the sessions over an eight week period um, where you focus on each one in turn and um, they do work in, pro in as a progressive um, session developer in the curriculum um, we use it in our PSHRE curriculum, as do other schools who've adopted it, um, and that works really well. And then currently we have a resource base. So the one thing we're currently doing, my challenge at the moment, is looking at how we adapt um, the resources for um, children that have got very complex needs 
um, and have perhaps uh, limited language um, to celebrate their challenges and successes. So that is something that we're currently working on um, as a development at the moment. Okay, thank you for the question, Rachel. Okay. I'm just ask is this Zoom aimed at following a programme running regular sessions with primary aged children? Yes, <laughs> Katie, I hope you've joined and, and you've had your uh, question answered. <laughs> so it is for uh, reception to year six in primary. Catherine, anything to add to that? I, I know um, Steve's has a secondary background, so I know some of the year six lessons, et cetera, have been transferred over into secondary year seven, and um, particularly the work on transition. We looked at that quite carefully um, and with secondary schools so that that supported the children and things that arose from that with year six and year seven teachers. So, uh, but they can be transferred into secondary as well. Yeah. That's brilliant. Thanks, Catherine. Um, oh, what was the author of the first book, please? Tough Guys. Tough Guys know. is, ooh, <laughs> I'll pop it up, Keith. I can't say, I'm looking at it backwards. Is it Negley? Yeah, and that's, it is gorgeous. Sure. So it's Keith who, sorry? Negley, N-A-G-L-E-Y. N-A-G-L-E-Y. Shall I put that in here? And there is a session in the book um, on how to use that really effectively. And I do oh, I just, think regularly I just, share all the books that are good because there's always new books coming out and I have a bit of a, an addiction to children's books, I should confess. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Some good choices there. Um, Right. Are we going to receive a certificate afterwards? Sorry, is that for attending here or as, as part of the sessions within mental toughness? I don't know if Layla, if you can elaborate on that question. Would you speak up if you're here? Okay, no, I think she means because if, if we attended the session, so no, there won't be any certificates afterwards, um, but we will be pulling a name out of a hat um, and someone will win one hour of free CPD training with Catherine. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, and depending on where you are, we can either do it in person or virtually. Thanks, Becky. Okay. Do we need to purchase a book to support the programme, Catherine? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but it does give you um, sessions for across an entire school and all your resources. Um, and once you've got it, you've got it. Okay. Um, thank you. And it has been piloted in lots of other schools, both in the UK and abroad. We always pilot, and I, I personally taught every single session over the, a couple of years and changed them and refined them really quite carefully. Layla, thank you for confirming and did jump on. Um, where can we purchase the book, please? So um, I am primary sales consultant, so I will drop my email address um, in the chat and you can um, contact me um, for any purchases. Um, I don't cover the whole country, but I will put you in touch with the right person um, and also the international team as well. Um, so that, that's fine. Okay. Okay, I don't know, Catherine, if you are happy that if there are any other questions that people want to just jump in and ask. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. I will do my best. Are there any other questions from anybody?
you don't want to ask them now, we can. Um, I know Gainer will share my contact details. So if you do want to reach out in terms of um, implementing the book and the ideas that we've talked about today, or you've got any follow up questions, then just get in touch. That's absolutely fine. One question has just come through. Um, what positive changes have you seen following this programme? So, as I said, that we found that children have a much more open dialogue about things, um, that they've found that it normalises things. So children perhaps that were anxious about things, their anxiety has reduced and they'll talk very pragmatically, especially our older children, about how you approach things. Uh, we see a change in learning behaviours too. So children that were resistant to challenge or less engaged are now have a greater awareness of those skills um, and able to develop them. Um, by that, I mean, you know, the hidden skills of what it is to be an effective learner um, and that motivation and engagement. Um, and we also see it impacting outside of school. We get feedback from parents um, and other teachers have said this in other schools where because of the programme that they've gone away and the children have joined things that they were worried about joining and weren't were resistant to tried new sports tried new activities so I think it you know from us that well-rounded individuals coming through more and I think we as part of this we do a lot of sessions um, with parents as well and I think that's important because developing that partnership between home and school um, and parents understanding how to support their children to build their resilience um, because I think parental anxiety has increased since COVID as well. Um, so, you know, because they want the best of the children and, and that doesn't always translate in perhaps the most effective way. And um, so being able to work with them and support them has been really, really effective. Sorry, I've just got a quick one, Catherine. Um, what do you refer to it as in school? Like we've referred to it here as like mental toughness. But would you just facilitate it through other lessons or you have um, a session just on what would what would you name it? So we do it in PSHRE um, and we do it over a half term and then we revisit it um, in different ways, do assemblies and in lessons. So we'll use the model of the four C's, perhaps when solving problems in maths, as well as doing the maths, they'll talk about how they can approach something that's challenging in maths, for example. Um, and we will comment on the behaviours. So if someone is showing commitment, we'll message that in our feedback in lessons as well. Um, and I think that's really key to continue to use the language throughout. Um, but we do it within a curriculum area as well, specifically. Perfect, thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. Any last questions for Catherine before we close? Sorry, just one last one from me. Um, do you know you were saying that you were going to um, adapt it for SEN? Will that be another book then coming that I need to look out for? Now I need to talk to Jenny on this call because I've just been playing with it with my resource-based teacher. So I don't know if I will share that. It won't be another book. Um, I don't know right. what we'll, we'll share that at some as somehow because yeah. I think it's really, really powerful for those children with those. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I thought I'd check. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Anybody else? Any last questions? All oh, quiet. Okay. So we um, anything to add, Catherine? Um, so that's me on Twitter and Instagram, and I do have a website. It's just down for maintenance at the moment, and there's lots of resources normally on there for different aspects of teaching and learning. Um, but feel free if you've got a question, you're interested in developing it in your school, just get in touch. 
And thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you, Catherine. So just to say to everybody, thank you for attending. I hope you've really enjoyed the webinar. Um, I have. <laughs> um, you will, as um, Becky mentioned, be entered into a, a prize draw after the webinar um, to win one hour of training for your school with Catherine um, and a free copy of Mental Toughness. Um, please feel free, feel free to email myself, Gaynor. Um, I did put my email in the chat. Um, if you'd like to discuss any of our wellbeing books or Rising Stars resources.